China's military aerospace sector is entering one of the most transformative phases in its history, and what we are witnessing today is not just incremental modernization, but a full-spectrum expansion of combat aviation capabilities that is reshaping global air power dynamics. Over the last few years, Beijing has accelerated the pace at which it designs, tests, produces, and deploys advanced combat aircraft, both crewed and uncrewed. At the same time, China is positioning itself aggressively in the global arms export market, aiming to challenge long-standing Western dominance in fighter jet sales. This reality has been highlighted once again by the latest unclassified Pentagon report to the U.S. Congress on China's military and security developments. While the report does not reveal many new technical details about individual aircraft programs, its broader conclusions paint a clear picture. China's military aviation ecosystem is growing rapidly, becoming more sophisticated and increasingly export-oriented. Over the past 12 months alone, China has unveiled multiple new combat aircraft that signal a bold shift in design philosophy and operational ambition. Among the most striking developments mentioned in the Pentagon assessment is the debut of two stealth aircraft featuring novel tailless configurations. These aircraft, now widely referred to as the J-36 and the J-XDS, represent a departure from traditional fighter layouts and suggest that China is actively experimenting with next-generation aerodynamic and stealth concepts. Tailless designs typically indicate an emphasis on reduced radar cross-section, improved efficiency, and potential compatibility with advanced sensor fusion and artificial intelligence-driven flight control systems. Alongside these experimental stealth platforms, China has also introduced the J-35A, a land-based fifth-generation fighter aircraft, as well as the J-15D, a carrier-capable electronic warfare aircraft designed to support naval aviation operations. The J-15D in particular is significant because it reflects China's growing focus on electronic attack, suppression of enemy air defenses, and information dominance in contested environments. This mirrors the role played by aircraft like the U.S. Navy's EA-18G Growler and signals a maturing understanding of modern air combat requirements. Equally important is China's progress in airborne early warning and control capabilities. The Pentagon report notes that a new AEW&C aircraft based on the Y-20B transport platform is intended to detect and track advanced stealth aircraft. This is a critical capability, as early warning aircraft act as the backbone of modern air operations, extending sensor coverage, coordinating fighters, and enabling long-range engagements. By pairing stealth fighters with advanced airborne sensors, China is working toward a more integrated and resilient air combat network. Perhaps the most consequential revelation in the Pentagon report, however, has less to do with individual aircraft and more to do with China's broader power projection ambitions. According to the assessment, China aims to produce six aircraft carriers by 2035, which would give it a total of nine carriers when combined with existing platforms, with the third carrier, Fujian, already undergoing sea trials and recent satellite imagery indicating progress on a fourth carrier expected to feature nuclear propulsion, the pace of China's naval aviation expansion is unmistakable. There are also increasing indications that Beijing may continue building conventionally powered carriers alongside nuclear-powered ones, suggesting a mixed fleet strategy optimized for different operational roles. If these plans materialize, the numerical and qualitative gap between China's carrier fleet and the U.S. Navy's 11 nuclear-powered supercarriers will narrow faster than many analysts previously anticipated. For Chinese naval aviation, this means a growing demand for carrier-capable stealth fighters, electronic warfare aircraft, airborne early warning platforms, and unhuman systems. Against this backdrop of domestic expansion, China is simultaneously pushing forward with fighter exports, offering a range of aircraft that cover multiple price points and capability levels. The Pentagon report identifies three fighters currently being marketed internationally the fifth-generation FC-31, the fourth-generation J-10C, and the JF-13 Thunder, which it categorizes as a light combat aircraft. 
The FC-31 is arguably the most strategically significant of these offerings. Developed by Shenyang Aircraft Corporation, the FC-31 is the export-oriented variant of what has evolved into the J-35 family. The aircraft first flew in prototype form in 2012, followed by a substantially redesigned and more refined version in 2016. Over time, development efforts shifted toward creating a carrier-capable version for the PLA Navy, while also maintaining a land-based configuration intended for export customers. More recently, the J-35A, a land-based stealth fighter aircraft derived from the same design lineage, has emerged publicly, signaling that China is serious about fielding multiple fifth-generation aircraft types across different services. While the long-term role of the J-35A within the PLA Air Force remains somewhat unclear, there are strong indications that the carrier-based J-35 is either entering or already in operational service with the PLA Navy. Despite the FC-31 being originally conceived with exports in mind, the Pentagon reports that as of May 2025, the aircraft has not yet secured a confirmed foreign buyer. However, it does state that several countries are showing interest, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. These nations are all actively seeking to modernize their air forces and have at various points encountered political or strategic obstacles when attempting to procure Western fighters. One notable omission in the Pentagon's assessment is Pakistan, which had previously announced plans to acquire a land-based version of the FC-31. While the absence of Pakistan from the list of potential buyers does not necessarily mean those plans have been abandoned, it does raise questions about timelines, financing, or shifting priorities within Islamabad's air power strategy. Egypt presents a particularly interesting case. Cairo was once set to receive 24 Su-35 fighters from Russia, but the deal collapsed under the threat of U.S. sanctions imposed under the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act. The possibility of acquiring F-15s was floated as an alternative, but that option also failed to materialize. In the end, at least some of the Su-35s originally built for Egypt appear to have been diverted to Algeria. Against this backdrop, a Chinese stealth fighter like the FC-31 could offer Egypt a way to acquire advanced capabilities without triggering the same level of political pressure from Washington. Saudi Arabia's fighter market is even more crowded and competitive. The kingdom has long been expected to purchase additional Eurofighter typhoons, but human rights concerns have slowed progress on that front. Discussions have also taken place regarding the acquisition of Dassault Rafal fighters, while Boeing has offered the F-15EX Eagle II. More recently, reports emerged that the United States was considering the sale of up to 48 F-35A stealth fighters to Saudi Arabia, a move that would represent a significant shift in U.S. export policy in the Middle East. Historically, Washington has been reluctant to sell the F-35 to Arab states due to concerns about maintaining Israel's qualitative military edge. This same issue has affected negotiations with the United Arab Emirates, which had once secured approval for a large F-35 deal valued at over $23 billion. That deal ultimately stalled, with Emirati officials citing concerns over stringent security requirements and restrictions designed to prevent Chinese access to sensitive technologies. In this environment, China's FC-31 is being positioned as a direct alternative to the F-35, free from many of the political and operational constraints imposed by Western suppliers. Turning to the J-10C, the Pentagon report notes that Pakistan remains the only confirmed export customer, having received 20 aircraft as part of two orders totaling 36 jets since 2020. The delivery timeline for the remaining aircraft remains unclear, but the J-10C has already made a significant impact. The fighter saw combat use during this year's clashes between India and Pakistan, where it reportedly operated in conjunction with the long-range PL-15 air-to-air missile. China moved quickly to highlight the claimed success of the J-10C and its missile systems in Pakistani service, using the episode as a powerful marketing tool.
Observers around the world took note, particularly those in countries seeking capable fighters that can operate effectively in high-threat environments without the high costs associated with Western platforms. Interest in the J-10C is reportedly coming from Egypt, Uzbekistan, Indonesia, Iran, and Bangladesh, all of which face different strategic challenges and procurement constraints. However, Indonesia may be drifting out of contention as a potential J-10C buyer, having signed contracts for Rafal fighters and announced plans to acquire F-15EX variants. Bangladesh, too, appears to be leaning toward European options following reports of a letter of intent to purchase Eurofighter typhoons from Italy's Leonardo. Iran, on the other hand, remains a strong candidate due to its aging air force, prolonged isolation, and recent combat losses. For Tehran, Chinese fighters could represent one of the few viable paths to meaningful modernization. At the lower end of China's export portfolio sits the FJ-17 Thunder, a joint China-Pakistan program that has proven to be Beijing's most successful fighter export to date. As of 2024, the JF-17 had been sold to Azerbaijan, Myanmar, Nigeria, and Pakistan, with negotiations reportedly underway for a potential sale to Iraq. While Iraq already operates F-16s, persistent maintenance challenges and logistical constraints may be driving interest in a more affordable and politically flexible alternative. The broader picture that emerges from all of this is clear. China is no longer content to compete solely in the low-cost arms market. With platforms like the FC-31, it is pushing into the high-end fighter segment, directly challenging Western and allied designs. At the same time, China is leveraging its strengths in drone technology, developing loyal wingman concepts and uncrewed combat aircraft that can operate alongside manned fighters. These systems could be offered as integrated packages, allowing even smaller nations to adopt advanced air combat concepts previously reserved for major powers. China's willingness to offer flexible financing, barter arrangements involving minerals or infrastructure projects, and fewer political conditions further enhances the appeal of its military exports. Coupled with the absence of restrictive end-user agreements and export vetoes, Chinese fighters present an attractive option for countries that find themselves constrained by Western policies. If China succeeds in securing its first export customer for the FC-31, it would mark a watershed moment in the global fighter market. Such a sale would not only validate the aircraft's design, but also help drive down production costs, making it even more competitive. More importantly, it would signal that China has truly arrived as a supplier of advanced fifth-generation combat aircraft on the world stage. For Mighty Military, this unfolding story is more than just about jets and contracts. It is about the shifting balance of power in the skies, the changing rules of arms exports, and the emergence of a new aerospace superpower that is determined to compete at every level. The coming decade will reveal just how far China's ambitions will take it, and how the rest of the world responds.